new pathway to permanent residence is now available for Ontario prospective immigrants. Stay with me. Hi guys, welcome back to Accord TV and if you are new here, my name is Accord and on this channel we talk about immigration and opportunities in various countries including life. So for this video today guys, we are going to talk about another exciting pathway to Canada and it is called Regional Immigration Pilot. It's actually the newest program ever. Very exciting and not quite demanding. So if you've been watching videos on Accord TV, we've talked a lot about different pathways to Canada and we keep updating as soon as they come up. So for this video guys, we are going to extensively look at the new program just launched. Well, I like this program because it's not as demanding, it's not requiring or asking for too much and basically anyone and everyone else can apply for this pathway. And most importantly, you can go for this pathway if you're living abroad or if you're living in Canada. So to begin with, let's look at the requirements to join this program. I really like this program for one simple reason. It's uh, it's much easier and it's not asking for too much. Like it's not asking for degrees or masters or anything like that. So to begin with, let's look at the requirements. For you to participate in this program, first thing, you need to have finished high school. So I don't know whether you call it secondary school, high school, grade 12, year, whatever they're called. There's so many systems. But the idea here is you need to have finished high school. Okay? You went to pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, all those stages, and finally you finished school and got your certificate. That's all you need for this program. The second thing that is a requirement for you to participate in this program is you need to sit for the IELTS exam and if you have already then you need to have a band 4 or above. Band 4 is not so difficult to get. It's one of the bands that you know they're just require asking for basics. As long as you can communicate and understand what someone else is talking to you, you will definitely get a band 4. If you can get a higher band, the better. So that's another technicality for you to participate in this program. Get your English level checked. Go sit for the IELTS exam, the general version. Get a band four and above and you're good to go. Another thing that you also need to participate in this program is you need to have relevant work experience. At least you need to have some work experience of uh, nine months and above and not less in your profession. So what have we said? We've talked about English, IELTS exam band four. We've talked about finishing high school. Yeah, and you have your certificate, a genuine certificate. And we've also talked about having your work experience, some relevant work experience, okay? So another requirement, I'm sorry, but when I'm talking about points, I find myself using another, another. It gets a bit tiring, but it's okay. Just get the information and, you know, work your process. Um, you can survive the another, another, another. Let me just say it again. Another requirement that you need to have to participate in this program is you're supposed to have a full-time job or a full-time job offer for you to participate in this program. And the job offer or the full-time job that you're doing is not supposed to be from any other province. The job has to be specifically in Ontario within the three communities that are participating in this program and the three communities are one chatham kent two cornwall and three quaint west so you need to be working in those uh, communities or you have a genuine job offer from those three communities within ontario itself so basically uh, this program regional immigration pilot was created to help employers find skilled immigrants to take up jobs yeah apparently they do not have enough workers to take up these jobs so they've come up with this program so that those people who are highly skilled can apply and go work in these areas and just fill up the gap of um, staffing shortage right and the thing is one thing that you need to understand is if you're following this program and you go through it these three communities we are talking about, it's just like living in your country and living in the countryside, like in the village, yeah? But again, you cannot really compare the village in Canada and the village in your, <laughs> in your home country. I mean, villages in Canada, they have perfect road network. They have internet, okay, 
other places they also have internet and stuff but it's so well upgraded i mean you will not feel that you're living in the village so honestly it's a worth pathway to go for okay and if you go to the community and you're not super super excited about living in that community you can just move in there work your two years and then move to a different community or no, not to a different community and then move on to a different province or a place which is you know more of a city busy life kind of thing if you're someone who likes that kind of life but i think for me i would rather go to some village place where it's more peaceful and no noise you know just wake up in the morning go to the farm pick up some mangoes and just chill out so very nice places guys yeah yeah, so I needed you guys to understand that uh, we're talking about three villages, countryside areas in Canada, and I, we've mentioned the names, so now we know them. This is actually a two-year pilot, so after two years, maybe they will extend it, depending on how things will be working out. If they've gotten enough people, then they'll stop it, or they could just give it an extension, and they could just extend it for another one or two years, who knows? You just have to wait until the end of two years, to know whether it's going to be extended or not but i'm telling you this if this program interests you okay apply for it now don't wait for one year to elapse or two years and see if there's an extension you're still organizing yourself no if you're feeling it go for it and again why not it's a very simple pathway Okay. Uh, you may say that, ah, you know, getting a job. Yeah, getting a job when you're not living in Canada is a bit hectic. But I tell you what, if you're living in Canada and you like this uh, pathway, then it will be in your interest to just move and start living in those communities. One of them, choose one. Go live in the community, find yourself a job there, and go on with life. And if you're moving abroad well enough, start looking for work. And then when you get your job offer, you process your documents and you get to move. I think I'm going to put to share some links on where you can get uh, jobs or start applying for those jobs and you know in these places. I'll put the link down in the description box. So once you're done watching this video, you could watch another one or but still don't forget to check in the description box. I'll share with you a link where you can just go click on it and see if you can, you know, hunt or start hunting for jobs it's not too painful because honestly this is something you just sit down in the comfort of your own house and you just send applications so no harm even if you have to send a thousand applications there's no problem it's not the same as having to travel from one place to the next one place you know going around and support sending applications for this one you do it at home organize that cv if you're not sure how to write the canadian kind of cv the format you'll find the link in the description box i've made for you guys a template so all you need to do is just go down in the description box get that template from a court tv website download it and then just fill in the gaps that is how simple it is i've done all the work so now there's no story of ah uh, before i sit down write a cv no i've done the template for you all you need to do is check name your name um mobile number whatever you write everything everything is there so remember to go in the description box and download your cv template from the accord official website okay so now let's look at the eligibility criteria for the employer job offer category the employer job offer category has three streams the first stream is foreign worker stream the second stream is international student stream and the third stream is in demand skills stream so out of these three streams we are going to look at two streams extensively so let's start with the first one foreign worker stream for foreign worker stream there are applicant eligibility requirements so in order to be eligible for the employer job offer foreign worker stream individuals must have an approved job offer or full-time kind of employment or permanent job offer in a skilled occupation classified under Canada national occupation as in NOC and the NOC type should be in level O, A or B. The job offer must meet the entry level wage levels in Ontario for that occupation. You also need to have a minimum level of work experience or have a valid license or authorization from the relevant regulatory 
body in Ontario. You should also intend to reside in Ontario. I don't know how they'll prove that, but yeah. The idea is if you're going in for this program, you're looking for work, you've gotten a job. Before you are approved, you need to at least look like you intend to live in Ontario. Not getting a job, getting your documents, permanent residence documents, and then you're good to go. And then the next thing you're running to a different province. No. You should look like someone who is going to live in Ontario. And you should also hold a legal status, that is a visitor record, study permit or work permit. And you should maintain that status until nomination, if residing in Canada at the time of applying. Now let's look at work experience requirements. The applicant must have two years of cumulative work experience, full-time work experience, paid and verifiable work experience either in Canada or abroad. It doesn't matter whether you got your work experience in your home country or you're getting your work experience in Canada. It really doesn't matter as long as it's a verifiable kind of work experience. And the work experience should have been acquired within the five years prior to the date of application submission. Not what full-time means. Working full-time means at least 30 hours of work over a period of one week in one job not two, not three, in one job only. And you also must have performed the same work duties that match the duties listed under the NOC for the occupation listed in the job offer in Ontario. The applicant must also demonstrate that they held a valid license from the appropriate regulatory body if the work experience claimed is in a regulated occupation. That requires authorization. Applicants may actually claim periods of self-employment to meet the minimum work experience requirement. Self-employment must have been paid and in the same NOC code as the position being offered. The Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program requires documentation, that is, reference letters, job descriptions, performance reviews, and job ads, verifying that work experience is in the same knock as the position of the job offer. Now let's look at license authorization requirement. To meet the program's license requirement, applicants must hold a valid license or authorization from the relevant regulatory body in Ontario for the same occupation as the one listed in Ontario job offer. Now let's move on and look at the job offer requirements. Now, the job offer must meet the following requirements that I'm going to talk about. Now, the position must meet the description of a skilled occupation in accordance to NOC type O, A, or B. The job offered must be for a permanent full-time position, minimum 1,560 hours of paid employment in a 12-month period. The offer must meet or exceed the median wage level for a specific region in Ontario where the applicant will be working. Wage requirements do not apply if the applicant has a collective agreement that is contract between the employer and a union that determines employees' wages. The offer must not affect the settlement of any labor dispute or the employment of any person involved in such dispute. The offer must not adversely affect employment or training opportunities for Canadian citizens or permanent residents in Ontario. And the position itself must be necessary for the employer's operations. Guys, you've noticed Canada is really, really good at protecting jobs for the Canadian citizens and the residents. And I think that's a good thing. Every country should do that. I mean, you must always put your people first before you bring in another. So, I guess, I don't know. I'm just saying, that's just my own personal opinion. If the job offer is in an occupation that requires license or authorization in Ontario, the applicant must hold the mandatory license or authorization at the time of applying. Applicants will need their proof of licensure or authorization when applying online. Now, let's look at ineligible job offers. Simply put, 
job offers that even if an employer gives you, then the job will still not qualify you to participate in this program. So there are jobs which are not eligible. They are ineligible. Let's look at that. A job offer will be considered ineligible in the following cases. It is for a position that is seasonal or part-time, regardless of hours worked, or a subcontractor, or an agency position. It will affect the settlement of any labor dispute or the employment of a person involved in such a dispute. It is made to an applicant who holds or has held or whose family members hold or have held equity in the business unless the equity was obtained as part of the applicant's remuneration as an employee and the total equity held by the applicant and their family members is less than 10%. Now, um, let's look at intention to stay in Ontario. All applicants must intend to stay in Ontario. The Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program will request that the applicant demonstrate ties to Ontario, which include, but not limited to, current or previous employment in Ontario, mm -hmm. job offers or job applied, interviewed for in Ontario. You must have gone to school in Ontario. You're still proving connection to Ontario. So you have applied for a job in Ontario. You are living in Ontario. Your current or some former employment that you had was in Ontario, was in Ontario. You have done some volunteer work in Ontario. You have lease agreements for a residence in Ontario or property ownership in Ontario. You have professional networks and affiliations in Ontario. Sorry guys, that sounds like an ambulance, or is it fire? I've never known the difference, but this one sounds more like... I don't know. Okay, we are seeing professional networks and affiliations. You see the importance when I tell you guys, you need to start making friends online. Huh? There's Facebook, there's, there's even YouTube, you know, just make friends with people connect with them. There's Instagram, there's Twitter, all these platforms. The world has become like a little village. You can reach anyone, anytime, irrespective of their location. Make those connections. Talk business, talk friendships. It will help you when time comes for you to move to Canada. You should also have family ties, okay? Maybe your sister, your brother, your mother, your grandmother, or someone in your family lives in Ontario. That is also a connection to the province social connections or personal relationships they you know about personal relationships yes personal relationships is uh, they are referring to love if you're single fall in love with a canadian i mean <laughs> okay fine i appreciate falling in love is something you cannot like really come out and say i'm planning to fall in love with a canadian but if you get a chance to connect with someone it all starts with friendship you become friends by the time you wake up in the morning, you're in a relationship, you're married and you have maybe eight or ten children. Who knows? It starts simple. Love may manifest in your life in a very different way. When you least expect it, it comes and knock on your door. Now it's up to you whether to decide whether you're going to receive it or not. <laughs> anyway, that was just a commercial break. We are carrying on. Another way that you can actually use to, co to uh, say you have a connection to Ontario is visits to the province. My friend, book a plane today, take a ticket. Okay. Now I know you're thinking, ah, you know, the borders are closed, whatever, whatever, and all those many things. Okay, fine. Right now we are going through some sort of a pandemic, but when it's done, get a visitor visa, go to Ontario and visit, then come back. You'll qualify for this program. You'll say you have a connection to Ontario, then you're asked which connection to yeah. I've been coming to Ontario, I've visited, yeah, I have friends, I probably even have a boyfriend seated somewhere. I don't know. Connection guys, connection, even visiting Ontario, going and then leaving, that's a connection. I think that's one of the easiest connection of them all. Okay? Let's carry on. Having said all that, even the employer has to be eligible. So now we are going to look at Employer eligibility requirements. In order to be eligible under this immigration category, the Ontario employer must have been active in business for at least three years and not anything below. Three years or more, the employer must have business premises in Ontario where the prospective nominee will work. The employer also must demonstrate sufficient 
proof of recruitment efforts. If the prospective nominee is currently living abroad, visiting Canada, or working in a province or territory other than Ontario, employer must be in compliance with all provincial labor laws, including but not limited to employment standards, health and safety, and labor relations regulation. The employer must also meet the program's revenue requirements and the required minimum number of full-time employees. The employer must have a minimum gross revenue for the most recent fiscal year of 1 million Canadian dollars and have at least five permanent full-time employees who are Canadian citizens or permanent residents at the location where the candidate is to work. And for the employers located outside the Greater Toronto, they should have a minimum gross revenue for the most recent fiscal year of 500,000 Canadian dollars. Now let's look at the application process. When you're making your application for a job, number one, you want to make sure that all your documents, your papers are in order. And you must not forget including a document. If you forget, then that's a lost opportunity. So you have to put all your documents together and make your application once. Once a registration is complete, registrants have 14 days to complete and submit the application or the registration will expire and it will be withdrawn. So you must make sure it's done within 14 days. Applicants do not have to complete the application process in one session. You may also assign an authorized representative to complete the application on your behalf. All supporting documents must be scanned and ready for upload. Okay, so once you've put all your documents together, you can make your application. If a decision is made and it's not in your favor, you can always appeal your case. It's allowed. If you're lucky, of which I know you're going to be lucky. Why? Because you've watched this video up to this level. You know the idea. You understand the drill. You're going to get the right thing. And you'll get your job offer. Get into this pathway, apply, and cross the border. So once you're nominated, you'll receive a nomination approval letter and an Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program Certificate. <laughs> certificate of nomination. Now, that's where life begins. Regional Immigration Pilot. I needed to take a look at this program, start working on it. It's one of those easy programs that you can follow through, okay? So you want to start following up on it and you want to start following up on it now. But for you to start, you need to watch the next video and find out how you can migrate to Canada. It will give you two important steps that you must do first to start your migration to Canada. See you in the next one.